Today we're gonna to evaluate the integral from zero to one of the square root of x over the square root of x plus one dx. So try it on your own. This is actually pretty tricky. Uh, and let me know in the comments if you're able to solve it. Okay, so before we get to the problem, I wanna introduce you to the uh, hyperbolic trig functions. Maybe some of you know them, maybe some of you don't. So let's all get on the same page. We're gonna look at the function cinch. So cinch of x, which is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over two. And we're gonna look at the hyperbolic cosine function, which is cosh, which is equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x over two. And something to note is that the derivative of cinch of x is equal to cosh of x. And the derivative of cosh of x is equal to cinch. So you could verify that on your own. And so it's probably obvious from the title of this video, we're gonna use a hyperbolic trig substitution to evaluate our integral. And the substitution we're gonna do is x equals cinch squared of some, we'll call it theta. But So let's write out what cinch squared is. So cinch squared of x, well it's just this thing squared. So you could work that out. It's e to the two x minus two plus e to the negative two x all over four. And cosh squared, of x is equal to e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the negative 2x all over 4. So it's easy to see that since cinch, these are hard to say, cinch squared x plus 1 is equal to cosh squared x. Right, if we add 1, here, it's like adding four to the numerator, which would give us the positive two. Okay, so let's use the substitution x equals cinch squared of, let's call it theta. All right, that's gonna be the substitution we use. Okay, so we'll have x equals cinch squared theta. So dx is equal to, again, how do we take the derivative? It's just the chain rule. So two cinch theta times the derivative of cinch theta, which we said was cosh theta. Okay, and we'll have to figure out what the bounds are. So to do that, we solve for theta, and then we'll plug in the original bounds. So theta is equal to cinch inverse of the square root of x theta of one, so the t upper bound, is just cinch inverse of one. And theta of zero is cinch inverse of zero, which you could verify is equal to zero. Okay, so putting this all together, our integral is the integral from zero to cinch inverse of one the numerator is the square root of cinch squared. So that's just cinch theta. The denominator is the square root of cinch squared theta plus one, which we said was equal to cosh, or cosh squared theta. So the square root of cosh squared, which is just cosh theta. Okay? dx was two cinch theta, cosh theta, I guess d theta. Okay, let's cancel out what we can and then we'll evaluate this integral. Cosh, there's a cosh in the numerator and denominator. 
so we could cancel those out. And we're just left with, and because it's messy, I'm not gonna write the bounds until the end. The integral of two cinch squared theta. d theta. And how do we evaluate this integral? Well, we know that we can write cinch or cinch squared theta in terms of e to the x, and we know how to evaluate the integrals of e to the, I guess, to the thetas. Okay, so let's rewrite this as the integral of two, what was cinch, squ cinch squared theta is e to the two theta minus two plus e to the negative two theta all over four d theta. We have this two and the four, could be simplified. And now we're ready to evaluate this integral. Okay, so this is equal to one half, bring that one half in front, e to the two theta over two. minus two theta, minus e to the negative two theta over two, evaluated at our endpoints, zero and cinch inverse of one. Okay, let me clean up for a second. Okay, notice we have e to the two theta over two minus e to the negative two theta over two, that's just cinch of two theta. So this is equal to one half cinch of two theta minus two theta evaluated at our endpoints, and then we could plug in the endpoints. So the final answer is one half of cinch of two cinch inverse of one, which is just some number, minus two cinch inverse of one, and then when we plug in zero, uh, cinch of zero, you could check is zero, and then negative two, zero. So um, the t plugging in zero will just give us zero. So here's our final answer. So let me know in the comments if you've ever done hyperbolic trig substitution. Uh, it's useful for some integrals, not a ton. All right, thanks for watching.